Hello again, uh, let's jump straight to the point and make a curved monitor as fast as we can because if we're going to make a desk as well and set up the scene and lights, it will take a lot of time. So let's do everything a bit faster. First, we're going to create a cube, scale it, or for scale, make it thinner, a bit wider, taller maybe? Next, we're going to bevel the edges uh, and Control B shortcut for bevel. Select the cube again to see a bit better. Go to this tiny little menu. Fraction is selected. I'm going to press Control on my keyboard and middle mouse button to drag to decrease the fraction. Uh, 0 0.2 will be good in this case. We don't need to add more segments or depth, so uh, let's press 3 on our keyboard and see how it will look. Now, what 3 does, it smooths the shape. If you're making cushions, for example, and you want to see how it will look smooth before you actually smooth it, you press 3 on your keyboard and 1 to go back to original shape. If you're happy with the way it looks, you go to Mesh and Apply Smooth. Uh, I'm not happy with it because we have to curve it at first and make some adjustments. Next thing we should do is to add some edges. Now there is a tool called Insert Edge Loop tool and I'm going to show, show you what it does. Let's create a cube again, move it, scale, and for example if I want to make some drawers, uh, I have to add edges in order to extrude parts and make it look like a drawer and that's where the edge loop will help us. Uh, first of all, we have to select the object and then we can go to Mesh Tools and here we can see Inside Edge Loop tool or we can shift, shift right click the object and Insert Edge Loop is here as well. Let's select it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add one here on top, on the bottom, on the left side, right side and middle as well. Now it might not be symmetrical but I'm not worried about it right now. When you're finished with the inserting edges always get out from the insert edge loop mode by clicking arrow on the tool menu or shortcut which is Q because if you just choose object mode after you're finished and um, select the object and decide to that you want to extrude things for example I'm going to select face and I want to select this way, so look what happens. Another edge will be inserted. So first thing first, Ctrl -Z, Z to undo. Q to get out from insert edge mode, insert edge loop mode. Now I can extrude faces and I'm gonna extrude this too. W, Shift, so extrude will appear here and take it back. Object mode. And you can see that it is visible. We have some drawers here and that's what Insert Edge Loop tool does. Let's delete it because we're not gonna need it anymore and go back to our monitor. Now I want to curve the edges and we'll do it with Insert Edge Loop. Select the object, go to Mesh Tools and don't choose Insert Edge Loop tool, but select this tiny little cube. I want to insert two edges and not one and in this case we're going to choose multiple edge loops. I'm happy with two but you can type as many as you want. Minimize these tool settings uh, because later we're going to reset it to go back the way it was before or you can close it and we can choose, uh, we can select it later again um, and rotate it and I'm going to click once here and two edges are inserted. They are already selected and what I'm going to do is um, press R on my keyboard and drag the edges so it will be distanced equally from the sides. While edges are still selected I'm going to press W uh, for a move tool and move it a bit. Let's insert two more edges by clicking G on the keyboard and what it does is that it, rep it repeats last command or last move we have made. G. And let's insert two more. Move it as well. 
press Q on, on the keyboard to get out of this mo mode and um, choose object mode and press 3 on keyboard to see how it looks when it's smoothed. Not bad, but we need to sharpen edges a little bit more and again edge loop will help us with it. Press 1 to go back um, the way it was. And now I'm going to reset Insert Edge Loop tool because I want one loop, not two mesh tools. And reset. Let's insert one here. One here. This one. And this one. Press Q to get out this mode and then choose object mode and press 3 or you can press 3 without going into the object mode and look it's much much better it looks amazing I think I'm quite happy with the way it looks so I'm gonna press 1 go to mesh menu and finally smooth it little tiny menu will appear and you can add more divisions but I don't want uh, to add more and what I'm going to do now is to delete history. When you're happy with the object and you know that you're not going to change anything anymore, you always have to delete history. Why? I'm going to show uh, it you a bit later, but now just select the object and delete uh, by type and history. Let's move this object a, a bit far. And up as well. And it's time to create a stand for it. I'm going to use cylinder for this stand. Um, we have to rotate it 90 degrees. E is for rotation. I can do like this or to be more precise I'm going to go to Chun box layer editor and type 9 here. We also need to make it a bit thinner and longer as well, or for scale. Make it thinner like this maybe, and longer. I think this will be enough. We also need to add more divisions because we are going to bend it, and if you don't have enough divisions it won't look good. So go to channel box layer editor again and click on poly cylinder one here we have several different things what we need is subdivision height um, we can select it drag the middle mouse button or we can type for example 20 here now we can bend this we go to the form menu bend shape not no not bend shape not linear and bend a line will appear and we need to rotate this line to match our cylinder. We can press E uh, on the keyboard and rotate or just type 90 degree here. Let's come to inputs and there is band menu and we curvature. Click it and drag it with the middle mouse button and the magic will happen. If we look at this closely, it's not smooth very well. Probably we should have added more divisions, but we can correct it now. But first things first, we have to delete history because if we don't do it, and for example, I want to get rid of this line, I'm going to select it and delete. Look what happens. What we did is gone. So I'm going to press Ctrl Z to undo and select both of this. Go to Edit. Delete by type and here also is a shortcut alt shift D, you can use that as well. And the line is gone. Now we can press 3 and see how it looks when it's smooth. It doesn't look bad, but both ends look like sausages. So with the it maybe edge loop tool can help us to uh, correct it. Shift, right click, so edge loop tool. Not this one, mm, here. Here. Ah, I always click the wrong edges. Q. 
Q, get out, three, and so much better. I'm happy with it. We can go to mesh, smooth, delete history, alt, shift, D, and let's drag the monitor near this um, stand. What we need now to do is to a leg to connect these two, or we can say that we have invisible leg, but for the learning purposes, let's make a leg. We can make a leg from cube. Let's create a cube. Resize it. And make it longer. I think this will be enough. We have a leg, but we need now to connect it to the monitor. I'm going to duplicate this cube. Control D is shortcut. Move it. Make it smaller. And rotate as well. E. No, wrong one. This should be type minus 90. And put this tiny little cube on the monitor's back. Uh, what I want to do is now is to create a curve that connects these two objects. We can do it by bridging faces of this cube, but first thing we should do is to combine these two, because if we don't do it and bridge them without combining them, Maya will tell us that we should combine them first. So before Maya tells us what to do, let's combine them. Shift select both, toolkit, combine. Now let's go to face mode. Select this face, shift select this face, and bridge. I don't like the way it looks. Uh, we can correct it now because it's a little bit of a bendy here. Let's undo this. Separate both and maybe push it. Where's my arrow? Okay, if, you, if your arrow, arrow is lost or is not on the object, you can go to modify center pivot and it will appear let's try this again combine faces bridge and it looks much better i think it's too high and that is the reason Third try. Fingers crossed. Ha! Huh. Yes! We did it. Now I've lost um, tiny little menu. Press. Where is bridge menu? We lost it. We lost bridge menu. T. Okay, here it is. In your case, this curved, curved part might look completely different, but don't panic. First of all, under Divisions property, uh, on this menu, you will probably have one, and the curve type, you prob probably have linear. So choose Curve Type to Curve, and add some as much divisions as your object might need. So our monitor is um, ready, and what we should do first is to delete history, because this leg has curve, and for example, if we uh, decide to resize it, look what happens. Our objects will be destroyed. So Control Z, Alt Shift D for delete history. Let's resize again to make to be sure that history is deleted. It is Control Z. Uh, now I want to resize all of them. Uh, if I drag the mouse, select them all and resize every object independently will be resized we don't want that so undo and 
What will help us in this case is to combine them. And now we can resize it. If we look closely, a blue line will be visible, which is which was left by this curve here. We can select it and delete. Nothing will happen because we already deleted the history. So this is our monitor. Video is already quite long, so not to not make it longer, uh, let's make desk and scene and lights in the part two. Thank you for watching and see you in part two.